You know, they know they know what they're talking with because they're the ones worried about racism all the time, and we all probably are half racist anyhow. Uh, the problem is that I think they're wrong. I think the progressive ideas about racism are dead wrong, and I think they are leading us into a racial hole from which there may be no escape. I think that our society is swirling into a race war, and it is courtesy of the progressives and the way they're doing it. And before we begin, there's two things you need to understand about progressives, and I talk about this a lot, but I think it's very important to understand what we're dealing with. And the first is that progressives don't have principles at all. I'm not saying that they have different principles than my principles. I'm saying they have zero principles, okay? Because the word principle actually means something. A principle is something that applies all the time and in every place and to everybody. That's what makes it a principle, okay? Otherwise, it's just, you know, your opinion about who you like and who you don't like. So, for example, I think I'll do a nice segue here, uh, although I, I didn't even know that I was that was what I was segueing from. Free speech is a principle. I am a principal believer in free speech, which I, by which I mean that David Duke has every absolute right to speak, and the Nazis have a right to speak, and everybody has a right to speak. Uh, any horrible opinion imaginable it needs to always be permitted because that's what free speech is about. What's fascinating, modern uh, students uh, are amazed when they learn this, is that the campus left in the United States today started in the 60s as a free speech movement. That was their whole thing. They were a free speech movement. We need free speech on the campuses. As up through the 1980s, you see old movies and old TV shows, as late as the 1980s, there's a constant theme that pops up about free speech. And it's always evil conservatives are trying to shut down the free speech somewhere, and the and the good people in the TV show will say, no, 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 free speech is an absolute, we've always got to allow it. Now, and they seem to have forgotten this. Why had they forgotten it? Because now they took over the campus. So when they were in the minority, they wanted free speech. Now that they run the campus, free speech is no longer useful to them. Okay? So now they're against free speech, which, by the way, I agree with very much with what the previous speaker said. It's in deep, deep trouble in the United States and the Western world today is free speech. Uh, but see, that's the difference. They don't have principles. I remember Elizabeth Warren a couple years ago gave a talk where she listed the 11 principles of progressivism. And the fast, and if you Google it, you'll find a million articles on it. Everyone on the left is like, oh my gosh, it's wonderful, the 11 principles of progressivism. The problem is that none of her principles were principles. Right. <laughs> <laughs> not, not one of them was an actual principle. Her principles included things like stock brokers should get paid less and, and, and fast food workers should get paid more. Well, that's not a principle, okay? That would be like, you know, a principle is, you know, the Red Sox should win more. You know, that, that's not a principle. That's just who you like and who you don't like, okay? So the left has no principles at all because they are a movement of power, not of principles. It, they will switch their principles to better principles if that's what's going to get them to power. And, and what you'll see occasionally is they will search around and look something that looks like a principle if they think it will make them win right now. But when that fails to work, they toss it out the window. So, for example, on this whole Confederate statue business, which is just ridiculous, I, I, th I think it's statutory rape, uh, and, and uh, the, I was listening to a left-wing commentator on the radio uh, the other day, and he said that those Confederates are not war heroes because they were fighting against the United States government. That's why we have to tear them down, because they were against the United States government. And I was thinking, there's hundreds of statues all over the United States of American Indians who fought against the United States government. Are we tearing them down? Nope because it doesn't, it doesn't apply anymore, okay? They, they were good for fighting against the United States government. We like them, but the, the Confederates were bad for fighting against the United States government. So anyhow, so the second thing you need to understand about progressives is that they have these underlying assumptions which they rarely talk about, but you got to expose those because if you, just, if you allow them to assume their assumptions, they've already won the argument. Now we're just 
bat batting details around, okay? Uh, so I want to talk about six or seven uh, underlying assumptions that are wrong, and then I want to go to what I think are six or seven principles. I honestly forgot the number. Uh, six or seven right. principles that conservatives should have when we deal with racism, because I'm actually against racism. I would like people to live in peace and harmony with each other. Okay? It's very important to understand that, that the racists and the anti-racists in this country are on the same side. I'm not saying that they sit down and have meetings together uh, to talk about their strategy, but it frankly wouldn't surprise me if they did. It's very much like the coalition of bootleggers and preachers that bought us prohibition. The two forces in this country that wanted prohibition were the bootleggers and the preachers, okay? who theoretically were on the opposite side, but they were really on the same side. And I think that's what Antifa and the actual racists are really like. So, the first wrong assumption is that racism is basically a binary issue. That there are basically two groups. The white folks and the non-whites, the people of color. Those are the two groups. And if you push the progressives, they'll admit, yeah, you know, there's Chinese people, and there's Puerto Ricans, and there's Venezuelans, and, you know, and there's some differences there. But, but that's not what they're interested in. When they talk about racism, do they talk about the fact that there has been thousands of years of antipathy between the Japanese and the Chinese? Long before blacks and whites ever really interacted with each other, the Japanese and the Chinese were at each other's throats. Do they talk about that? No. Nah, that, that's not interesting. When they look at racial disparities, do they, do they study the difference between the incomes of American blacks of West African origin versus East African origin? Nope. No, nobody cares about that. The whole point is it's, is it's the whites versus everybody else. And so this is a huge mistake if you're trying to deal with racism because in you know, Rwanda 20 years ago, the Hutus and the Tutsis had a race war which killed a million people. I don't think there was 100 people in the United States who ever heard of Hutus and Tutsis. They're both black. Well, what's the problem, okay? Well, it turns out they hate each other a whole lot. Uh, even though no one in the United States was even aware of that, and managed to kill more people in a couple months than have been killed in all racial violence in the United States from the founding of the United States to today by like 100 to 1. Okay? So that's the first problem. How many ethnic groups are there? And the answer is there are thousands. And the way to define an ethnic group is that somebody considers themselves an ethnic group. I mean, that's it. Okay, you know, you guys may look absolutely identical to me, but if I, you know, if I, if I'm the, if I'm in, think I'm in this group, and I think you're in that group, and I think there's an issue there, that's all that matters. There are thousands, and by failing to understand that complexity, the left gets it wrong over and over and over again. One of the stories of my childhood, which fascinates me, was the, uh, was the nation of Rhodesia, which was absolutely a racist regime. You can't even argue this. There was six million black people and 300,000 white people, and the white people had all the political power. Okay? And there was tremendous pressure brought on Rhodesia to change, and they you can't have this, and they were boycotted, and, pressure, and eventually the white uh, government collapsed. And uh, what happened afterwards? Massacres happened afterwards. The massacres that weren't happening under white majority rule because it turns out there are two different black groups in Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. Uh, they're, they're the, it was the Shona and the Matabeles, and they hate each other, been waiting for the, you know, the whites were keeping them from killing each other, and they were like, the whites are gone, you know, off we go. And so you completely miss this stuff. Uh, by, by making the wrong point. And by the way, you know, the, the, it's, a, it's a fascinating example, and we'll, and we'll get to the politics, uh, the political side of this, uh, but on the last day of totally racist Rhodesia, the life expectancy for a black person in Rhodesia was 66. You know what it is today? 
37. Not 37. 37. Okay. There are no white people in Rhodesia anymore. The ball fled because it's it's an, ab it's an absolute it's an absolute hell. If you ca a serious person cannot argue that black forget the whites the blacks in Rhodesia were way better then than they are now. Okay. This is stuff you got to deal with. If you want to deal with it seriously. So the second error that I believe the progressives make is that they think that racism is the worst thing in the entire world. That is the rock bottom worst. It does not get worse than that. The, and that's very important because it allows them to do whatever they think is necessary because nothing is worse than racism. And again, I disagree. I think the bad, I don't think it's good, but the badness of a thing really is determined by what it leads you to do.